What's going on guys, Dots Gaming here, and in today's video, I'm going to be discussing my settings for streaming in 2022 using OBS Studio. So I've been getting asked a lot by various viewers on YouTube and on Twitch what my settings are for OBS Studio, how do I have things configured and set up, and what do I personally do for my settings. And so I wanted to discuss those here today so I could stop sending everybody 95 screenshots and just instead be able to refer them to this video. So the general tab does not really have too much that you need to worry about. The stream tab, this is going to be obviously where you put your stream key. Um, you can go on to Twitch, go into your profile and you can find your stream key there. So I do stream on Twitch. So I do service, Twitch, server, auto, let OBS Studio pick the best one for me. And then I just put in my stream key here and I am able to stream to my own stream, you know? <laughs> now here in output, this is gonna be where most of the magic happens. So in terms of your encoder, I highly recommend if you have an NVIDIA graphics card and that's going to be where I'm focusing this guide on today, using the NVENC encoder. It is by far, in my opinion, the one of the best encoders to use right now. The old NVENC one was pretty bad. And so for a long time, I used X264, which does all of the streaming and whatnot out of your CPU. But the new NVENC encoder does it out of your GPU, which for me is extremely helpful because most of the games that I play, their performance bottlenecks are in the CPU. So I want my CPU to be solely focused, mainly focused on playing my game and running all the other uh, you know, programs and whatnot on my computer. And my GPU, which with a lot of the games that I play doesn't really even get fully utilized, can be used to stream. Like literally from switching to X264 to the NVENC encoder, quality is pretty similar, but my ability to stream at a, I was able to stream at a significantly higher quality, higher resolution, higher um, frame rate. Like it's just such a good encoder to use and I definitely recommend it. You do not want to rescale your output here though. Don't do it here. Okay. I'm going to show you where you're going to do that. So leave this unchecked. In terms of rate control, this is where you're going to want to do CVR. This is where, you know, it's just, this is going to be your constant bit rate. This is what you stream at. Now, in terms of your bit rate, Twitch does limit you at 6,000 bit rate. So I set my to the max 6,000. I know that there are like tricks and ways to get past 6,000, but Twitch's recommended max bit rate is 6K. So that is just personally what I use. Um, also, Twitch does recommend a keyframe interval of two seconds. So I do use that. Now, I want to tailor, I wanted to tailor the rest of my settings towards getting the highest quality possible so we went for preset max quality and profile high these will give you the best quality stream you can get also turning on these two features look ahead and psycho visual tuning also do give you some nice visual improvements on your stream that do make it look better so i did check both of those on keep in mind this will obviously put more of a strain on your gpu but i do think it is worth it and it does not does not feel too punishing at least for my computer um gpu leave on zero i only have one gpu i'm on a single box so Leave this to zero. Now, max B frames, I put it four. The reason I do set this to four, a lot of other videos, you'll see set this at two. NVIDIA recommends setting the max B frames to four when you do use look ahead. So I do set that to four for that reason. So if you are going to be checking both of these features, I do recommend turning on four for your max B frames. Um, recording, this is obviously a streaming profile. I do have a recording video also on my YouTube channel. I'll put that in a card somewhere when it is released so you can check that out um audio wise i never really touched this left it as a default uh replay buffer this is a way for you to kind of save clips locally to your computer kind of like shadow play would in a way um so if you enable the replay buffer i set the maximum replay time personally to 180 seconds which is three minutes so if i press the save replay button when i start the replay buffer so you can see down here in the bottom right um it'll save the last three minutes of whatever happened to my computer which i think is pretty cool so you're going to want to set a hot key for that though go down here to replay buffer save replay i bound this to Control shift s and then because i have a stream deck i bound that to a button on my stream deck i push that and boom it saves it for me so that is the output tab now the audio tab um i personally set the sample rate to 48 kilohertz i have my mic set to that i have my headset set to that i have everything set to the same audio sample rate so that it sounds as good as possible so make sure that those are all the same in your windows sound settings as well as here in obs studio now with the audio devices 
you're going to want to set these obviously to whatever device you are listening through for your desktop audio and then your mic is going to be whatever mic you're using now i have a guide that i can link to you not written by me but it's an amazing guide that i'm going to link in the description below that shows you that you can set up two different like essentially i'll call them like like audio um like audio paths, I guess is maybe the, not the right word, but basically I have two different audios that I can turn on and off with my stream deck. You can also see here that I have, I call them desktop audio and discord. So basically with the way I have my audio set up, I have one, I guess, profile that if I have it on, it has the discord audio and my desktop audio. But if I use the other one, it has my desktop audio, not my discord audio. I know a lot of people have traditionally needed to use the stream meter banana thing that breaks every five seconds. And so I wanted to try to find a way to avoid that. And I found a way to do that with this person's amazing guide that I will link in that description below. So if you have been looking for a solution to that, this should solve that problem for you. So because I do have, they do use that configuration. This is why I have my global audio devices set up the way that they are. Now, in terms of the video tab, this is going to be where you do your downscaling. So my main monitor, the monitor that I stream off of and do the recording off of is a 1440p monitor. So that is why I have the resolution set to 1440p. Now, in terms of your output resolution, you can set this to whatever you want, 720p, 1080p. Personally, when I stream, I actually stream at 936p. That is personally what I do use. I find that it is, it's way better quality than 720. It's not quite as good as 1080, but because it isn't quite 1080, it puts a significantly less strain on my PC to stream at, and the quality is still extremely good. So, I recommend looking maybe into some of those like different resolutions, you know, the 900p, 936, stuff like that. I think that, you know, they're definitely worth looking into because they look almost as good as 1080p, but don't give you all the strain of 1080p. So definitely recommend it for that reason. But with using the profile I've recommended here, you can set your output resolution to basically whatever you want. Now the downscale filter, you're gonna to wanna to use the leg sauce filter. This is going to, when you scale your you know, your picture from here to something smaller, it's going to give you the best looking stream that you can when you do downscale it. Common FPS values, I recommend 30 or 60. I personally stream in 60 FPS because my computer can handle it. So I do recommend you know streaming in 60 if you are uh, if you are able to. And then I did not really do anything else in advance and high keys with the exception of that replay buffer now really quickly though i do just want to discuss um some audio settings because i have also been asked a lot about you know my mic and how i have the mic set up and everything so i will really quickly go over that so if you go over here to like the cog wheel um next to your audio stuff bar whatever audio mixer that's the word <laughs> and you click uh you click filters this is where a lot of the work is going to be done here so i personally use four filters in this order and this is how i found it to be the best noise suppression noise gate compressor and limiter so the noise suppression is just going to suppress some background noise if you have you know like i have a dehumidifier on behind the curtain over there and so you know basically i would do a recording listen to it you know and then raise you know move this from right down to the left to suppress more noise based off of how you know trying to cut out the dehumidifier so I personally recommend using the speaks method. I don't know, at least for me, like with the good quality RNN noise, my mic ends up sounding like crap whenever I use that one for some reason. So I personally just use this. And like I said, you set the suppression level to be whatever you want. Noise gate this is another one that's going to be pretty personal to you settings wise. I don't really touch the attack time, hold time and release time. But basically what this is going to do is allow you to open your mic for sound as I just smack it, my bad. <laughs> you can open your mic for sound when you speak at a certain volume, and then it will close off the audio channels um, once your voice drops below a certain volume. This is basically super helpful for um, like not picking up like mic sounds or cueing in your mic if you're just doing other things and not speaking. So very helpful for that. Again, you wanna adjust this so that when you talk, you can see your audio like you see at the bottom, you see it go up when you are speaking and when you're talking and that you don't lose any words but you want to make sure that when you're not speaking that nothing around you whether it be keyboard clicking doing whatever you are deciding you want to remove is not going to cue in your mic so that's what the close threshold is, is when it stops picking up audio open threshold is when it does pick up audio now your compressor is going to help out with basically evening out the audio throughout your speaking throughout you speaking you know basically when you normally talk you know sometimes or more most of the time for me <laughs> i talk pretty loud and sometimes you talk pretty quietly just from doing you know normal things and the way people talk and so the compressor helps make the 
uh, more quieter noises, a bit more louder, and the more loud noises, a bit quieter. Now, for that, this is how I personally have mine set up. Three, uh, three to one ratio, negative 22 threshold, six, uh, six millisecond attack, 60 millisecond release with a four dB output gain. This is personally what I have found to be the best for me. You are gonna wanna mess with these I think a little bit yourself to kind of see if, if my settings don't work for you perfectly. Um, I have a blue Yeti mic, so what I did was I turned the gain basically nearly all the way down um, and then used this to really take care of a lot of my audio. Now, I basically, so I have the ratio three to one, so it's not really like um, overly, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? It's not, it's not messing with my audio too too much a lot of times when i had a higher ratio where the compressor would do more work that's the word i'm looking for my audio i felt sounded like a little bit muddled didn't really like it um so i just had it just just mostly to make it so that it helps my low if i do ever speak quietly helps bring that up so people can hear what i'm saying but the most relevant filter for me when i talk is the limiter the limiter is basically very similar to a compressor but it is like a hard stop so like when i speak my voice will not go above what I set the threshold to be. That's going to hard stop it there. This is really good for if you get hyped a lot, and, you know, will get loud while you stream and record and whatnot. That's going to help. It makes it so that you don't blow out your viewers eardrums. So I personally set this again with me. I found negative six to be a good value. It was enough that I wasn't making like people's like ears hurt if I got like really hyped and loud, but it wasn't so, it didn't limit so much that if you set your limiter too high, like you limit too much, you're gonna notice that your your voice sounds like flat in a way. And so I tried to find a volume or a, or a setting for this where it wasn't gonna make my voice sound flat, but at the same time, it wasn't going, I would block out the really loud audio to prevent me from like hurting the ears of my viewers during situations where I got really, uh, really excited and whatnot. Um, but yeah, those are my settings for, for recording and for my mic and everything. That is how I have myself set up um, for streaming and recording in 2022 hopefully you guys did find this video helpful if you did i'd appreciate if you left a like on it really does help me with the youtube algorithm uh, if you have any questions about the settings feel free to leave a comment below also if you try these let me know how they work for you i would appreciate that a lot and if you guys like this video and want to see more gaming content mmorpg content elder scrolls online and maybe some more streaming videos like this where i talk more about content creation here and there feel free to hit that sub button as well as the bell to keep those notifications on so thank you all so much for stopping by today i do very much appreciate it as always i'm dots gaming and I'll see you all in the next one.